Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anim and Orange and welcome to the review video for the Micro World Cologne Cathedral model. Look at the size of this thing, look at the detail, this is a fantastic model right here. It is sizable, it's a little bit bigger than I expected, though I didn't really have a very solid set expectation of what the size of this model was going to be, it did end up being a decent size. It also ended up being uh, a lot more, I won't say complicated, but a lot more detailed and a lot more complex than I expected. Now, I didn't really know what to expect going into this model, and I had fairly recently built the Notre Dame, which is a similar style. So I expected something very similar to that. Similar to that. This one is definitely a step above the Notre Dame. This has quite a bit more detail, quite a bit more flying buttresses, I believe they're called, quite a bit more supports, and just there's just a lot more to it. This is an awesome model. It took me a total of nine hours to put this entire thing together. And I will say, one of the things kind of in my mind that I use to judge how much I like a model is if it, if it takes a long time, but it doesn't feel like it's taken a long time, then it's, then it's keeping me captivated and it's keeping me keeping my mind focused on it and I'm enjoying it on some level. I may not be jumping up and down going woohoo I'm enjoying this but it's keeping me captivated. It's keeping me moving forward. It's keeping me engaged and it doesn't feel like it did not feel like it took nine hours to build this model. Now one of the first things I want to say after saying several other things ha 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 is I want to comment on the instructions for this model. Now, I thought I had done another Micro World model. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm getting close to 300 unique models at this point, so it's getting a little hard to keep track. But I, looking back, I can't find where I have done another Micro World model. So I believe this is actually my first one. I've certainly heard a lot about Micro World. I've seen a lot of people build Micro World models in like the Metal Earth subreddit. I've even seen someone who, who posted about this model and made some comments on some of the same comments I'm going to repeat today when it comes to what's in the instructions. Now I expected there to be some issues with the instructions and I, I hate to say it, I, I wasn't disappointed. The instructions aren't terrible. They aren't terrible, but they're not exactly accurate as to what's going on with this model. They're pretty close and it's not that hard to decipher everything. And they're not terrible, but they, they've got some issues. For instance, one of the first things I noticed is the sections this the models are kind of are the instructions are kind of a mix between metal earth instructions and iconic and iconics instructions i don't know who copied who but it has sections like you you've got your your usual information up here you've got your sheets and the part numbers but then you start with section a down here you flip the other side you've got b c d they're they're alphabetical alphabetically labeled each section all the way up to h on the first sheet of paper front and back. Where it gets a little goofy is it goes from H to the next page Y. And then J, K, L. I, I jokingly said in the build video that I think they thought I meant Y. Somebody said I and they thought they said Y and they put the wrong thing. I really don't know what happened, but that one's not that hard to figure out. The ones, that, however, there are some other inconsistencies in the instructions, one of which is finding the parts. Now they tried to do something similar to what Metal Earth does and what Peace Cool does is when you've got duplicate parts, they shade them in so they're easier to find. And at first I was excited about that because there are quite a lot of duplicate parts in this model. However, when it comes time to look for some of those duplicate parts, I noticed that maybe over here they're all shaded in with the same color, but then I needed like 16 of these parts and I only found eight. Looking around, there were some that were either not shaded in, shaded in at all, or they were shaded a completely different color somewhere else. And that led to a small amount of confusion. Fortunately, most of these parts were pretty unique and easy to find and locate with or without the instructions. Actually, some of them were easier to find on the metal sheets than it was to try and find it in here, because one of the things that I'm less than happy about with these instructions is how you have the writing plastered all the way across in kind of an office green color and it somewhat detracts from the information you're trying to read the fact that they've got this repetitive background of of lettering wording symbols that uh, in some instances make it a little difficult to see exactly what's going on not terrible again not terrible but distracting 
Here's a couple of instances where duplicate parts are haphazardly labeled and they're actually mirrored. One instance is 13 at the top right here. I'll show you a close-up of it. You've got part 13 labeled and it's part of those big towers at the, the one end or front of the church. And if you look, those parts, they, they have to be, the, the other part isn't labeled. 13 is labeled, the other part right beside it is not labeled. It has to be the same part, but if you look at it, one is mirrored of the other. They're not exactly the same, but one is kind of a reflection, a mirror reflection of the other. They, it, it, that's got to be the part, and I used both of those parts to do the two different towers. It worked fine. It really didn't matter that one was mirrored from the other. They folded around and it did the same job. There's another instance with some parts I'll be talking about here probably in a moment where there was some confusion about how many of each part there actually were and they were slightly mislabeled and some of the parts are basically mirrored to other parts and I really don't even know that any of those parts had to be labeled anything differently because they all appear to fold up into the same shape and seem to be interchangeable. And there's also instances where the instructions point towards a, a part going in a particular place and the arrow where it's pointing to is just wrong, it's just off. There were two instances of that and the one that stands out the most to me is part 62 later in the model once you're starting to put all the walls on there's there's a part 62 that points at a corner where you're doing some other assembly and it doesn't go on that corner it goes a little bit over in another corner and a gap that's left and so i knew that gap was something needed to go there but it took me a while to figure out that it was the part 62 on the next page that went there or the next section that went there because the arrow was pointing not exactly where it should there's another part later on where the arrow could be construed in two different ways it's not as off as 62 is but there's a couple of different things in the instructions that are going to throw you off now as usual I've done build videos for all of these for this model and all the details are in those build videos I'm going to try and touch on some of the things right here without going too terribly long but just know that there are some things in the instructions that are going to maybe confuse and mislead you a little bit there's little things like in section B when you're working on the roof pieces it's not perfectly clear exactly how much you're supposed to fold those pieces up but that's not hard to figure out once you move on to section C it gets complicated. The two steeples or two point uh, towers of the church are made up of a lot of parts. And there's some multiplication involved in figuring out just how many of the different parts you're supposed to use in the assembly of the sections of those two big towers. Figuring out that part 9 and 10 need to be done twice in two pointed roof pieces, not that hard. When you get to the next part, when you're working with parts 12, 13, 11, 12, and 13, it gets a little bit more complicated, but still not that hard. You need, it says right there on the instructions, you need two th part 13s and eight assemblies of 12 and 11. So you got to do a little bit of multiplication. You need eight different part 12s and 16 part 11s to put that together. Still not that hard to figure out. Where it starts to get kind of complicated and it took me a, a few times to do, double check myself to make sure I was doing it right is the next section over when you're building the assemblies that involve parts 14 15 and 16 and that one doesn't that one only gives you the multiplication of how many of the assemblies you need and it's a little bit fuzzy it could be a little bit fuzzy how many of say part 14s you need and it took me a while to kind of finally break it down because all in all you need eight assemblies of this thing that involves parts 14 15 and 16 to go around four around each tower and there's two towers now to make eight of these assemblies you obviously need eight part 16s and each part 16 has two assemblies that involve part 14 and 15 together so you'll need eight times two of the 15s which is 16 you only 16 part 15s but then 14 not only goes on top of 15 for the lower part of the assembly that involves 16, but there's an upper part of 16. There's a 14 that goes on the upper part by itself. So in actuality, for part 14, you need to multiply 8 times 4 to get 32 part 14s for that assembly. And this is it's somewhere in this area that I discovered that some of these parts are shaded in the same color and some of them aren't and I honestly right now can't remember didn't make a specific note of it at the time when I was assembling now that everything's clipped out I'm not I'm having trouble looking at instructions and figuring out which one but 
some of these parts are labeled like there, there'll be several of them that are colored the same color but then you'll find some over on this sheet like one of the sheets of all the parts 16s for instance I'm not exactly sure if it's 16 all the parts 16s are labeled and colored in one color but then a couple of sheets over none of them are colored in they're just plain sitting there and then maybe over here you'll have a different color and some of them colored in so it got to the point where I would just find one example one or two examples of the part clip those out and just lay them in front of me and search the sheets just just search the metal sheets just forget this piece of paper and find the rest of it clipping them out and comparing them to make sure I have the right one because trying to find them in here when things are not colored and labeled properly was actually more confusing than just finding them on the sheets. Now I've said it several times, instructions aren't terrible, they're just some things that are a little misleading or a little less than accurate on there. But on the plus side of the instructions, the one thing that I do like that they've done is right here at the top corner, when you're putting together in section Y, when you're putting together all the different flying buttresses, it can get a little confusing knowing which part goes where, but they have a top-down view that shows what each part, what the number of each part goes where. And when I got to that point, I actually took some time and laid out the four different sections to make sure I knew which one was which and which one went where and worked on them one at a time following this map that's at the top corner to make sure I got the right part in the right place. And that went really well. That part was laid out very nicely and not hard to understand. There was a, or there is some, some text in the corner that I use Google Translate to translate, and I can't remember exactly what it translated to. Basically what it means, my interpretation of it is one of the part 45s and 50 on the roundish end there's two tabs on a lot on the bottom of a lot of those flying buttresses and the very end ones on one side only one of the tabs connects the other tab leave it there because when you add the next section that those two spare tabs are part of what holds the next section on and holds it stable i saw i mentioned earlier i saw how somebody on the metal subreddit had made this model apparently they had clipped off those extra tabs thinking they were extra and not to make that mistake and, and fortunately i didn't not because I saw that, but just kind of translated. It said something about share, and I'm like, well, I'll probably figure this out on the next section, and, and I did. And going back to section C, when I was building these upper tower pieces, and you've got the cone shape up here that's just two parts, and then you've got these lower sections. This one is not that complicated, but then this lower section right here is the most complicated with parts on top of parts on top of parts. I ended up making another video out of that assembly about looking ahead. If you've seen that video about looking ahead when you're building these models, like tips and tricks for, for, for people, for new people coming into the hobby. This is the part, this section right here on both sides is what I used in an example. And I ended up having to build kind of a process to put that together because Instructions don't really give you a process, and that's okay. And the first couple of times I did it, it was a little haphazard, but I ended up kind of building a process in which you fold this this way, and then you add this part before you add that part, and so on and so forth. And if you want to know more about that process, you could either watch the tips and tricks video that I made, or just watch, I believe it's part one of the assembly, part one of the three part assembly video on this build and it'll show you the process that I went through in building that. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to kind of work out, do you fold this part first and add that or do you add this part before and then fold it? Which way is gonna work better? But with that part, if I remember correctly, the bottom 14 and 15 assemblies need to go on after the upper 14 assembly. You gotta put that 14 assembly on the top part before you put the bottom part on because you'll block the top part from getting on if you put the bottom assembly on first. Plus I tried Putting the parts on, then folding the main part of that sub-assembly, that didn't work so well, but folding it almost all the way, putting the parts on, and then the last two flaps in was a better process. Another little tip is those sections that the lower third that you're putting together, that top piece that folds down has one tab that holds it. Try to bend that tab down as tight as you can because it. once I was putting things together, I had some issues with getting this upper piece to slide over the piece underneath it without getting caught and just twisting these pieces sideways. And then from there you end up 
doing these roof pieces underneath here, which you can't even hardly see underneath all these flying buttresses, but you're trying to shape them like an accordion. And that was this whole process that at first didn't make sense, but I, I learned that if you kind of look at it from the back side and there's a flat part, if you keep the flat parts in line and the pointed parts, you use the front piece that folds down to figure out how much to fold those and then pieces come together and, and it kind of pulls itself together over time. You move on from that and you get to where you're starting to add these flying buttresses to the different parts of the roof. And actually when you get to this end part, you run into these pieces that I was talking about earlier that are labeled like three different parts. And the instructions say one thing, but then you don't find the same number of parts on the metal sheets. And I don't even know that they need to be labeled separately. The instructions have it labeled as 34 goes on one end, there's five part 33s that go across, and then 35 goes on the other end. But I want to say when I went in the instructions, I could only find like four part 33s, but then I found two part 35s or 34s. It was a little confusing, and the only difference I saw, if you laid the parts out, they looked just like each other, except that some folded like mirrored of the other. But once you folded them up, they look to be the same part. And I did the best to try and put the parts where they should go. I could have possibly mixed one part up, especially since there weren't enough of one part labeled, but there was too much of another. But in the end, everything worked out fine. One thing that I will say when doing this end half circle part, before you put on these pointed pieces, they're part, part 38, I suggest you go ahead and put the flying buttresses on first because I put these lower pieces on, then tried to put the flying buttresses on, and I kept poking my finger, and I had a hard time getting the pieces into their place because there wasn't a lot of room, and that's one thing that I wish I would have done a little different order, save myself some trouble. Good news is, once you get to the part where you're doing these four different sections with all these flying buttresses, they come together easier than this end piece did. One of the things I did with this end piece that I don't know would have worked any better if I did it differently because the way the roof was around it is I put the bottom two tabs in first and then tried to get these upper tabs into the wall and that was a stretch when it come to do these on the side there's some corner ones that work a little bit differently they're not hard to get you, you put them together they're not hard to get into place but the ones that are repetitive along the side just go straight on I ended up I started putting the arm tabs against the wall first and then I would kind of wedge or pry the bottom two tabs into their place and secure them and that method worked a lot better but I will say that with the way the roofs are designed on these flat side pieces there's more room to do that whereas this curved piece I don't know if that process would have worked it's not the process I went with I don't know if it would have worked then after you get the upper half of the walls, then it's time to do the lower sections. Actually, this whole end piece attaches together as one piece, and then you're kind of filling in the bottom walls along here and along here. And those pieces, once you get all the pieces attached to those and you're trying to put the wall in place, there's little gaps for the flying buttresses, and they are a tight squeeze. So make sure that you're trying to fold these flying buttresses as tight as you can Make sure you get the, you might have to go around and kind of pinch them a little bit, but be careful doing that. You don't crush them. So there was a couple of them that I had to almost crush to get these wall pieces, to get that gap over there where it should be to get those wall pieces on. Then I ended up with a gap here on either end where I wasn't sure what went there. And I left it open for a while because at first I thought there was some extra repetitive pieces. These squarish pieces along the bottom half here are just all part 55. 55 over and over and over again. Now on the instructions they have another top-down view that shows 55, 55, 55. At one end it shows two part 52s, which doesn't make any sense because they also label part 52 as one of the four walls that you're putting there. As far as I can tell they're all part 55s. All of these columns are part 55s. Even after that though you end up with that gap and what ends up going there, the instructions are slightly misleading. When you get to section M and you're building this center wall on either side, there is off to one side a part 62 that's shaped a little oddly and it looks like it's pointing right at one of these corners. When in reality it goes, actually it's pointing like it's going into one of these corners of this end piece and actually it goes into that corner right there. That's the missing gap. There's two of them. There's shown one on each side, 
The one on the back side doesn't have an arrow pointing to where it goes. The one on the front side does, and it looks like it's going to the wrong corner. And that's one of the things I mentioned earlier. There's a misleading area where it looks like it's telling you to looks like it's telling you to put a part where it doesn't belong. However, that wasn't that hard to figure out. Just left that gap to open as I, as I was building this. I'm like, there's nowhere for this part 62 to go. It has to go in that gap, and it fit pretty well. And once you get that done, you start building the large wall pieces that go around here. They're not that hard with the exception of there's another instance on, I think it's this side, where you could easily get two of these columns mixed up because it's less than clear. It shows on the instructions going from, I think, left to right. It shows part 66, 67B, 68, and 69, but then it shows 69 times 2. And now that I understand what that means, it's clear as day. But at the time, I wasn't exactly sure what it mean by 69 times 2. I kind of, I think I kind of assumed that 69 times 2 meant the other side had a 69 as well. What happened is 67B, where I thought the arrow was pointing, was just to the right where it actually went. I ended up putting 67B kind of on upside down. It fit. But once I put that part on the side and looked at it, I was like, no... This doesn't belong here. It very clearly belongs to the side uh, one step to the left around the corner. I was able to pull it off two times. I was able to get in there and twist and pull it off and put it in the right place. And then I realized, oh, 69 times 2, which means 69 is on the left and right side of part 68. And 67B is on the left side of one of those part 69s. Now, when you go to do the other side, it's a little more clearly labeled where they're supposed to go. It doesn't specifically say 69 here and here, but it's a little bit easier to understand looking at it from the back side. So 67B and 67A kind of go to the back side wall of the corner. They don't go over here. It doesn't go here. It actually goes kind of on the back side and there's a space where it covers that, where it's cut out for that roof piece right there. Again, not terrible but it can be a little bit confusing. Once I got past that point, it was pretty clear sailing, just getting the last few pieces on and snapping everything together. Again, it took nine hours. It didn't feel like nine hours. There were some slightly frustrating parts, again, trying to find what pieces go where and what order they go in, but it, again, it wasn't that terribly hard to figure out, and it kept me engaged because this was such an interesting model, such a fascinating, such a wonderful looking model with so much detail that I just completely stayed engaged and for the most part just enjoyed my way all the way through the build. I could go on and nitpick and complain about how the instructions were a little bit misleading or I could say you know what as many times as I've complained about say Metal Earth getting things a little bit wrong on the instructions there were nothing compared to some of the things that went on with this build. Still though I finished the model and it ended up being fantastic. It did just like the person in the Meller subreddit. Once I was done with this build, I had to go back around and straighten a lot of things up because you try to take care to not hit all of these pointed pieces as you're putting it together, but you absolutely get to the point where it cannot be helped. And I had one or more of these crosses just folded over, squished down, and I left them that way because I, if you don't know it already, I've said this before, when you're putting a assembly together and you've got an antenna or a spire or whatever pointing up and you knock it over leave it leave it until you're done with the build or you absolutely have to straighten it up because if you just say oh i bent that over i'm going to straighten it up and you still have more build to go you're going to hit there's a good chance you're going to hit it again and oh let me i hit it again let me straighten it back up you do that too many times you're going to end up breaking that part off and it's happened to me with like the hubble telescope it's happened to me with other models so if you have a spiry pointy part or an antenna sticking up and you bump it leave it try not to bump it again try not to mess with it don't even bother straightening it up until you're done with the model take yourself a break get you a snack drink you a cup of coffee whatever come back a little bit later once it's done and you've calmed down because there's halfway decent chance you're frustrated calm down come back and straighten everything up that's what i do and i have this fantastic model to show for it really really wonderful i was nervous about getting the gold version because the gold tends to break a little bit easier did run into any weak points with this model i think there were one or two times where i worried that i might have broken apart but it 
didn't end up becoming a problem and I don't even remember for sure if that actually happened and which part it was so it obviously wasn't a big deal. Now this ended up being a viewer requested model some time ago unfortunately I hate to say it it's taken me a while to get to it I finally got it done started it right before Christmas took some time off finally got back to it after after the new years and, and here it is and I'm this is one of those things where I'm thankful somebody for recommending a model that I may not have otherwise done because this was a fantastic build a lot of fun and I'm just thrilled to have it in my collection it's going to take up a good amount of shelf room but don't we all deal with that problem when we're really into these builds oh one more thing I almost forgot when you're putting these side pieces on right here front and back it's not that hard to figure out how to put them together so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the assembly process if you want to know more there's the build videos for that but there is one tab sticking out right about here on either side i honestly don't know where it's supposed to go maybe it's supposed to poke through one of the holes in the window but none of them really look like they're made for that and i ended up just bending it down out of the way because these windows have all those little holes when i was trying to put the piece on they kept catching the holes and keeping me from sliding it back and forth and lining up all the tabs so i said get out of my way i bend it down out of the way no big deal. If you look really closely, you can kind of see it in there. Been out of the way, but whatever. I wasn't going to mess with that. Also, I want to point out, with this being a micro world model, and I don't normally do micro world models, not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're not as easily available here in the U.S. as, say, Metal Earth. They're pretty much an online-only thing if you want to know where to get one. I got mine through AliExpress, through Crazy Toys. AliExpress store. I'll put a link to the description down below. This is the box that it came in. There's also, if you look on the back, there's also a silver version. I got the gold. When I checked Crazy Toys AliExpress store just a moment ago, the gold was there. I didn't see the silver, but I didn't really hunt for it. So if you don't if you're wanting the silver, you don't see it on Crazy Toys store. There are other AliExpress stores that sell these models as well, like Magical Model Store. I've dealt with them before. There are other stores that you can find micro world models and, and find this Cologne Cathedral model. I'm going to leave it at that. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel so I can continue to bring build and review videos. And thank you for those of you who make requests. I'm always trying to get to them. It takes a while sometimes. I've gotten quite a few requests on the table as it is and I'm still working through. And I've got, like Metal Earth is sending me models for me to build and review as well. I love it when the two overlap, but that doesn't happen often enough. So. I'm always working forward to trying to get to your requests, trying to get to different builds and try to get everything going and oftentimes putting off the stuff I really want to do. But then I end up doing something like this that I didn't know I wanted to do. And that was a lot of fun. So thank you for watching. And as always, keep on keeping on.